It is a great honor now to welcome Father Patrick Desbois to the New York Public Library, and no less of an honor to have the president of this great library, Paul Leclerc, be in conversation with Father Patrick Desbois. The Holocaust by Bullets is a story of Father Desbois' heroic mission to investigate the murder of Ukrainian Jews by Nazis during World War II. He and his team have visited the sites of these murders and interviewed surviving witnesses, many of whom were recruited by the Germans to assist in the executions. These people, it's the first time they speak since 42. And you know they are poor people, so there is no image, no symbol, no allegory. So my question was how to transmit that and also to transmit the horror of this genocide. Because it, it was not normal shootings. Jews were really, really massacred. You know, they established this law, one bullet, one Jew, one Jew, one bullet. It was a request of the Wehrmacht to make economy of ammunition. And I discovered but the first thing that the Nazi did in a village, they went to see the mayor and they asked how many Jews in the district. And you know in Soviet Union, Jew was written in the passport. For example, in this district, the mayor said there are 1,670 Jews and they had also the addresses. The killing unit will come in the city, but in the city they will phone to everybody who has a pistol to form a unit of killers. They will sleep the night in the village and on the morning they will surrender the village and make an announce that the Jews are deported to Palestine or to Kiev or to where it depends. Of course, it's a trick. I met one witness. She told me I was watching at the window and I saw one of my neighbors entering in the colon to be shot. And she told us, don't cry, don't cry, we go to Palestine. Yeah. And she told me, me, I was with my cow early behind the church and I saw the grave. I knew where was Palestine. So finally, after one moment, they say to these people to walk. They are in Cologne, five per five. And they have 100 meters before the mass grave to undress. Here are waiting other children who are required by the mayor with their cart and horses. They immediately charge the suits in their cart and they bring back the suits in a school and they sell them by auction. I met many witnesses who said after three days, all the district was suited in Jew. Five per five are brought, in fact, in front of the killers. Why five per five? Because one bullet, one Jew. And most of the time, there are five <coughs> shooters. In one village, we saw they shot in one day 1,500 persons with three shooters. If the Jews were only injured, they were pushers who pushed the Jews in the mass grave. By example, an old lady, and she said, yes, I remember, they forced me between every shooting to walk down in the mass grave with 14 Ukrainian girls and to walk on the corpse so that it will be more space for the others to be shot. And she told me at the end I saw all my school arriving, it was a Jewish school, and they shot them in front of me and I had to walk on their corpse like the others. It's hard for me to imagine ever recovering from that kind of an experience and never having any kind of a normal life after. They, they don't recover. They don't recover. Every farmer in the village says, I remember the mass grave after the shooting was moving during three days. Or it took three days for the mass grave to die. And for me, it took one year to accept, to understand. And you set yourself out, I think, not only to document, but really to prove in a comprehensive kind of way what really happened. Tell us a little bit about the Soviet requ requisition system. I'm not you know, sure. in every village, the mayor in Soviet system he has around him a council. When he says, I want 50 children for tomorrow to dig the grave or to do anything, he sends somebody from the council who goes to see the Dissiatnik in their street and say, tomorrow, 50 person. The Dissiatnik in the night, it knock at the door, you, you, uh -huh. you, uh -huh. you. This is well before the Germans ever came. It was before the Germans arrived. It was the Soviet system, the regular Soviet system of requisition. Mm -hmm. So you must understand that these people who have been requisitioned by the system, they have never been found guilty by Soviet justice. Because everybody knows that when you are requisitioned, even if it's for a killing, you have no choice. I see. 
You must understand also that it was an order to kill the Jews, but also an authorization to kill the Jews. It means it was legal to kill Jews and gypsies. I will give you the worst example I met. An Ukrainian grandmother, her daughter married a Jew. She was Catholic and very upset of this wedding. One day, the daughter went to the market. She had six, six children. The grandmother, she brought the six children to the Gestapo and they have been shot. So don't forget, when you cut the law not to kill, you change completely a society. A kind of unwritten chapter in the Holocaust is the use of young Jewish women as sex slaves. Want we'll to talk a little bit about that? One guy, he told me there were 34 Jewish women working in Gestapo and he gave me the list. I learned that at the end of the war, all these 34 Jewish girls were pregnant. So they called a killing unit from Sokal to come and to kill them. I learned that these Jewish girls, they knew that they would be shot. So they asked the Nazi to make a tour in truck just before the shooting to say goodbye to all the village. So all the village saw them saying goodbye. And finally, I found an old lady shaking like that in an isolated house near the forest. She told me they shot the Jewish woman just here near to my house. But don't show yourself to my neighbor because he's a nationalist. He will beat me if I speak. You must understand that violence is strong. Past is not past in Soviet Union. Soviet Union has frozen the time. For the people in their memory, it's like one day before. Every person was killed by one person personally. No machine, no train, no gas can burn east. And these Nazis were not superhero, were only criminal, like serial killers. One day we arrive in a village, they say, oh no, the chief of the unit, he was drunk. He asked for a table with sausage and vodka, and he put all the guns on the table, and he asked the Jew to pass in front of the table, and he was shooting like that. And so at the end of the day, he made a public discourse, but he shot 1,530 Jews, I think I remember. And more than that, he asked for water, he washed his hands in front of everybody to show it was not his crime. And he threw the water behind. It was a crime with one criminal and with one victim, because one bullet, one Jew. Баклові з манкорів і їм роми, їсьми рабом у рапі моя із брак, ви ж табак, ви з перві струмем виснесей, ви із кадор, ви з халеви скалов, ще мейди куче беріку.